still going. He's still here with us and a uh, great competitor and an inspiration to a lot of people around. Let's bring up from the USA, Tim O'Donnell. And maybe Isabel and Finn as well. Let's bring up now his uh, podium finisher at the 70.3 Worlds. Just finished his uh, Ironman over in Rote in Germany and a great, uh, great race it was for Ben over there. So from the USA, Ben Canute. And I actually use the stairs, but these young men, they're just hopping up like it's nothing. So thank you, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> young men, right, okay, I get it. <laughs> And uh, last but not least, he's an Ironman world champion. He's a world champion in the Olympic distance, but uh, currently he is the defending Olympic champion. In two weeks' time, he will go to Paris to uh, try and uh, emulate something that uh, hasn't been done before. And, uh, you know, in maybe one year's time, he will win that Olympic gold medal again. But he is trying very hard to get that back and defend it. Mr. Christian Blumenfeld from Norway. So, love to just give you a little bit of background. Uh, this year, the PTO European Championship has already been held uh, in Ibiza, and then we are over here now for the US Open, uh, finishing off then in Singapore in a few weeks' time. But right now, these athletes are very focused on other goals this year as well. But I'm gonna start with Christian. So, oh, you've got the microphone there, Christian. Make sure it's turned on. And uh, I'm just gonna ask you a question, Christian. You've won just about everything in the sport now, but, uh, at this distance, 100k, 2k swim, 80k bike, and an 18 kilometer run. What's it going to take for you to take this victory home? Yeah, it's a tricky distance to be able to nail. Uh, like two second places in uh, both Edmonton and Ibiza, and like 20 seconds behind the winner both times. So, yeah, I don't know, maybe. Like you have to race aggressively, but not too aggressively. Because then, I go in the uh, Edmonton, like people were camping off, and as I did in uh, Ibiza, I came too far in off the bike. So it's uh, really a balance between intensity and uh, racing strategically over three hours. So yeah, and uh, also six hundred thousand dollars of prize money here for the PTO US Open. Uh, incredible to see the PTO, you know, putting up the money and. Uh, you know, just giving the athletes a, a real chance at earning a living, you know, these days, which is absolutely incredible. Do you find that the money is a good part of the Christian or are you after the titles? It's both. Like, of course, uh, having uh, a big prize purse is uh, bringing all the best athletes together. And I think when you're raising the best, then also the prestige is higher. So uh, I think you need both to get all the athletes together. You need uh, the prize purse to be there and, of course, 100k on the day would be amazing to win, um, but I think uh, the main thing also you want to beat the best when they care. Well, you know on race day, Christian Blumenfeld will give it everything that he's got and uh, right up to the finish line. You saw what he gave a couple of years ago in uh, Kona when uh, actually yeah, last time he raced in Kona there and got carried off on a stretcher, so we know he's going to give it everything out there. Thank you, Christian. We'll come back to you in a minute, Ben. Um, great to see you back up here. You're the, you know, the inform American athlete. I know that with with Tim on your left hand side here. But over the last couple of years, you've been really finding your groove at these longer distances. You've been one of the top athletes over the Olympic distance for a long time. Um, why the success? And immediately at seventy point three, and now jumping up to the uh, longer distance as well. Yeah, you know, I um, had uh, I made the switch in twenty seventeen and had a great year there, but uh, I think after COVID, just coming back into it, making the full switch after 2020, just uh, come in and, and race long distance, middle distance, full time, and being able to focus and just have a set schedule instead of being, you know, waiting for starts in the ITU or traveling all over the world doing that stuff because it's um, a little bit more of a demanding schedule. So I can kind of pick and choose my races a little bit better here and focus in on the training and um yeah last summer i didn't have you know the best stretch of racing but ever since half ironman worlds um have just been able to carry that momentum and just keep executing yeah ben and um christian had a great battle uh in the middle of st george up there in utah and 
came right down to the very end and it was amazing uh, Christian Blumenfeld you know caught up to Ben quite quickly on the run and then Ben uh, got dropped a little bit and then came back and you know gave it a good fight and it was right up until the very end there that Christian was able to pull away and secure the victory. Um, ben, I wanted to talk a little bit about being a parent uh, for you and I will talk to Tim about this as well because there are a lot of parents out there but it seems to me that a lot lately in the professional division there's a lot more kids of, around. How do you uh, you know, balance your life and, uh, and the family and stay at the top of the sport? Yeah, it's always tricky, but I think it's, um, I have an amazing wife who is able to take on a lot of responsibility and we have, you know, help around and it's just, I think, open communication and just knowing that, you know, there's a lot that goes into this sport, but honestly, I'm just really lucky to have a great team around me that helps me be able to balance it and focus when I need to focus and I know that I'm, you know, very all in when it comes to working out and racing. But then it allows me to go home and kind of switch off and I don't have to be trapped on 24 7 because at least for me um, the Norwegian method doesn't work for me I can't be 24 7 trap on all the time I need the ability to switch off so um, I know this guy disagrees with me a little bit but uh, yeah no I just love having that dynamic and being able to experience it all with my kids and having them uh, and seeing kind of the world through a fresh set of eyes is uh, really, really cool to be a part of. Yeah, you've got a couple of years on KB and uh, and Gustav and, and the crew, but um, yeah, those guys are just out there just trying to see what the bodies can take and handle and, and giving, it, uh, <laughs> giving it the curry every day of the week. All right, thanks, Ben. Over to Tim. Uh, just before we get to Tim, uh, over 7,000 athletes will be... Uh, in the age group uh, nationals this weekend, which is absolutely incredible. But in the PTO men's race, over 17, uh, 17 out of the top 30 athletes are here in the world ranking, which is absolutely amazing. And then more of our women uh, in the top 30 are here over the men. So you're going to be treated to two really good races coming up tomorrow afternoon, the 4.15. We will get started with our men's race right over here on the pontoon, just before, uh, behind Discovery World. And then the same time, on Saturday afternoon as well. So please come down and support the PTO. It's gonna be incredible racing with $600,000 prize money on hand. Okay, Tim, incredible to see you. Still going, uh, just over the age of 40 there. Tim, we talked to Ben a little bit about, you know, balancing the family. So we'll talk We'll talk a little bit about something else. Health issues. Um, you know, in the sport of, of triathlon, we, you know, you've talked about this, uh, you know, until you, <laughs> you know, very red in the face or, or white in the face or blue in the face, I should say, but um, heart attack a couple of years ago. And tell us how you overcame that and, and got back into training and actually back into the sport. Yeah, it was, uh, it's definitely been a, quite a journey back to this place and it uh, wouldn't have been possible without the support of my wife, Rennie, and, and our family and uh, our coaches and the support system around us. Uh, the first, this, the, you know, the first conversation I had was, all right, let's find the best doctors in the world. And uh, if they give me the, the green light, then I'll get back. If not, um, you know, I'll, I've had a great career. Don't need to, don't need to do triathlon. Uh, could walk away happy. Uh, but I love it. So uh, we did just that. And, um, yeah, I'd say mentally, the mental side of it was much harder than the, the physical side in terms of kind of getting back into it. Even with almost a year off of proper training, um, you're just always questioning why you're out there and, and things like that. So it just took, honestly took time took time to get comfortable again. I remember the first outdoor ride I did, I was on blood, blood thinners for a while, so riding outside was a no-no. And I got passed by a big semi-truck, and I'm like, wow, whoa, this is really dangerous out here. <laughs> and then you kind of get used to it, and um, this goes back to, uh, to normal. So uh, I'm really grateful to be here, and that's what, you know, I've been a uh, part of the PTO since its inception. To be uh, one of the uh, biggest stages in the sport right now, it's, um, it's an honor. All right, well, while we're on the PTO, um, what would it mean to you to be U.S. Uh, Open champion at the PTO? It would mean that probably about 10 or 15 guys crashed or, <laughs> or had heart attacks. That's not what we were looking for. <laughs> uh, Tim? Honestly, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my, my race style is always kind of um, swim and bike in the front and see what happens on the run, kind of hold on. And, uh, it's going to be hot. Things happen. Uh, maybe Christian cramps up again. <laughs> that's that's my chance to win, I think. Okay. All right, um, Christian, uh, just uh, over to you just for a second here. The PTO events 
for you, Christian. PTO events, uh, you know, over the last couple of years have, have given the athletes quite a good income. Is a bonus structure that's, uh, you know, being put together as well at the end of the year, and uh, it's been a great couple of years. Explain why you like racing in the PTO. Uh, it's because of the level, like you're getting all the best athletes there, and I think the fact that because of prize purse is so well and it's, they're paying so well down, it makes it easier for uh, the contenders to turn up. Because uh, for a lot of races, if you finish even fifth or sixth, you're losing money by traveling half or half the uh, uh, the way around the world to get to the race. So the fact that you can make it more affordable, like possibly getting an income even though you're not winning the race, it's uh, a much deeper field. And the, the deeper the field is, the more uh, uh, people can sort of surprise on the day and uh, you have to keep your eyes open for a lot of guys, not just one or two guys who can uh, uh, yeah, be there on in the race. Yeah, prize money going all the way down to the uh, top 30. So it's incredible to see that everybody has a chance of making a uh, you know, decent income here at PTO. Ben, for you, a um, couple of weeks in between the PTO US Open and the PTO uh, Asian Open in Singapore coming up. Quite a quite a good double, a few weeks apart. How are you going to muster that? I'm doing the triple. I know uh, Christian's doing the quadruple in August with the Paris Test event, but I'll be going here, Singapore, and then Finland for the 70.3 World Champs. And um, Yeah, I mean, I worked hard all year. I spaced out racing, put in a huge block before Roth and sharpened and made sure the intensity was good coming into this race. And August is my reward for that. And I think, you know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but like we train so we can race and test ourselves. And that's what August is all about for me. So it's a little bit of unknown territory, I think, coming off of a full distance race and uh, then switching and, and going faster and doing three races in four weeks. But uh, I'm up for the challenge and I'm just excited to see what I can do. All right. Well, Europe normally goes on uh, vacation during the month of August. Uh doesn't sound like you guys would be taking much of a vacation. I think the vacation is going to come uh, maybe in November when uh, everything's said and done. Tim, what's uh, left for you this year? Oh, no, I'm going on vacation after this race. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a couple of weeks to recover now after racing. So, uh, yeah, this, I mean, this is honestly be the highlight of my season. I uh, decided not to uh, try to go to Nice. Uh, going to was my jam. And uh, at this point in my career, you know, wasn't interested in necessarily learning a new world championship course and all that stuff uh, took me long enough to figure out Kona <laughs> so yeah I mean uh, I'll do some fun races later in the year but uh, yeah this will be kind of the highlight for me Tim what does it mean uh, for someone like in the crowd today one of 7,000 people that are joining us for the USAT Nationals uh, you know getting after their own you know glory uh, on the same weekend as most of the top pros in the world it must be just very exciting for these athletes and uh I think it's great that the PTO and the USAT have, you know, culminated into this massive weekend. Yeah, uh, it's amazing, Greg. And, uh, you know, I started out racing age group. I remember doing uh, age group nationals in 2002. I think it was in Lake Placid. And uh, I would have loved for uh, a professional race like uh, the PTO US Open to be held in conjunction with that. Because uh, it's such a, spe a special weekend for everybody, you know. Regardless of where you are in the pack or, or what age group you're in, we've all put in the training and we all want to test ourselves and see what our limits are. So the fact that we can do it all together, it's pretty special. Yeah, it was uh, really special as well. We've already done it once this year at the PTO European Open in Ibiza and now down here at the US Open. Christian, back over to you. What's it going to take to win this race uh, tomorrow? Good swim. I have to stay with Ben, I guess, or that group. Uh, and then solid bike and the fast run like uh, <laughs> you put it all together swim bike and run uh, and you can't really have any big weaknesses throughout the race uh, so yeah hope to feel good uh, just come, came down from altitude three days ago and also hoping that the bodies work well after the travel but uh, yeah i'm coming in with a lot of uh, confidence and uh, but also it seems like a lot of the guys I'm racing is coming in with confidence. So, uh, yeah, just having a pressing my fingers, I'm having uh, good legs when I'm uh, waking up tomorrow morning. Yeah, all you have to remember, Christian, is two, seven, and five. Okay? Two uh, laps swim, so yeah, seven on the bike, five on the run. If you're coming on the run there, then you, there's, there's no risk that you're running one, one lap too much. 
Okay, you are, you are making sure that you are running 18k exactly or so. Like you're not doing that final extra lap. All right. Well, while we're on the subject, uh, Ben, uh, you're one of the top swimmers out there. You've got Aaron Royal. You've got Josh Amberger, back guard. Uh, just three to name, you're one of those uh, top swimmers. Uh, what's it going to take to hold these guys off? And uh, with the Aussie exit out there, you've got two laps of 1,000 metres. Uh, what are the tactics going in? Like, there's a pontoon start, obviously, and when you do the Aussie exit, you know, you're transitioning. The blood goes from the, the shoulders back into the legs and back up into the, you know, the higher part of the body there. It's quite uh, unique how, you know, we do the Aussie exit. So how do you control the heart rate, and uh, what's it going to take to have a couple of minutes on these guys, you know, getting out of the swim. Yeah, I'm just going to put Jan, Magnus, and Christian, have them all on the start line right next to each other, and they can sort it out by the first buoy, um, and that'll, that'll help us out up front. Um, but no, I think it's, the only strategy is really just go all out to the first buoy, and everybody sorts themselves out there, and it's just keeping the pace high, and I think we have at least a few guys who are all motivated to do that, and the Aussie exit, I've always kind of enjoy it. Um, I almost feel like for me, it's it's a little bit more calm. I get to kind of take a breath, reset, and go in for the second lap. And I usually swim stronger on the second half of the swim anyways. So um, having a place to reset and go right into it is, is good. So uh, it gives you a little chance to look back and look around and see where guys are at, make maybe a strategic decision or two. But um, yeah, I think for the most part, it's just whoever's feeling good on the swim on the day is going to be pushing it really hard. Yep, well said there, Tim. Uh, you know, on those words, uh, it's going to be high level on the swim, obviously, and on the bike. The charge is going to be, uh, by a lot of people, if there's going to be a little bit of a deficit, a couple of things about the bike ride. Not only do we have seven laps of uh, 11 kilometres, 11 point something kilometres, but the ride range, and we've got the ranger system in there. Uh, this is a system uh, for our professionals, ladies and gentlemen, that once they get up to 20 metres, which is the drafting distance between the uh, the front wheels of our bikes out there, they have a 45 second uh, allowance to get through uh, to cross over into the front of the other athletes here. So there's a warning system on the back of the bike and uh, it's a red light. Once you hit that red light, if it's, if it's yellow, it means that you're in a safe distance. But once it hits red, you have to overtake, which is a, one of the greatest pieces of technology uh, I don't know if you agree with me or not, Tim, but I think it's one of the greatest pieces of technology that we've had in our sport over the last couple of years. And I do really think that it's going to help, you know, the race stay very legal and very fair. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, number one, just having that larger draft zone at 20 metres instead of 12 is, is super important. Uh, and I haven't had a chance to use a race ranger yet, so I'm excited, but I've seen Dylan um, and their team develop it, which is it's pretty amazing. But you know, we're all looking for a clean race. Uh, non-drafting we want to we want to see who's the strongest athlete out there and uh, yeah it's pretty cool that we have um, technology now that makes it more interactive for the athletes and a little bit less of a, a guessing game yeah i love it myself all right so we're going to ask you uh, to think about some questions and uh, ask our athletes here i'll i'll fire off another question while you are thinking about your your questions out there but christian as we uh you know, get ready for a race tomorrow. What What's in store for this afternoon? You know, don't tell me you're going to go out and do a 2K swim and a 50K bike ride and a 10K run. Well, I have the body swim fun conversation left. So I will go in the swim course uh, later this evening. Go for a little ride around this morning. So like the day before the race, it's always important just to keep the legs moving. And uh, I like to do between 4 to 5 to... 70 minutes in each uh, discipline and also hydrate, eat well, carbohydrates and just loading for tomorrow and also uh, being able to relax, not be too much on your feet uh, walking around but actually be taking time or just sitting and uh, chilling. Uh, so. He didn't know he's watching our kids. Oh, this, right? Christian, you didn't know that you're babysitting <laughs> Ben and Tim's children today? <laughs> Four children, that's When is the kids race? Oh, yeah, well, it, it's all the time. The kids are always <laughs> racing. What are you talking about? Okay. All right, Ben, over to you. Just uh, I wanted to ask, oh, actually, one, one more question to Christian. Christian, what does a Norwegian do to chill in Milwaukee? You're not going to go hit one, one of the uh, no, no, no beer bears. gardens, are you? <laughs> I don't know. We go for ice cream, maybe. <laughs> Enjoying the sun, the blue sky. Yeah. All right. That sounds good to me. All right. Uh, questions. Uh, okay, we've got one question right here. Yeah, so obviously, uh, you know, 
obviously, like, just looking at the weather, it's, this is obvious, this is going to be a uh, much hotter race than uh, we sometimes see, like, earlier in the season. Uh, Christian, I had the, uh, the good fortune to see you race in Abu Dhabi last year, and that was also an incredibly uh, hot race. In both of those races, um, the heat was really uh, engaged, which was, was my Achilles heel. How do, uh, how do you all um, prepare for both before and during that kind of heat, especially um, especially living in a, a colder climate? How do you how do you acclimate and, and prepare yourself for that extra challenge of the, uh, the heat? Okay, the question is, how do you acclimate to the weather conditions that are here right now in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin? It's a little bit muggy, it's a little bit warmer than where Christian comes from in Norway, but Christian's been training at altitude, I think, in Pont Ramu, right? Uh, so that's the the question. So Christian, you want to take that first? Yeah. So uh, first of all, if you know where you're having a uh, that the race will be most likely warm, like in three weeks ahead, then you can sort of start two weeks out and try to uh, get more and more heat stimulus in your training uh, by either. So if you know that you have a warm race coming up in you know, two or three weeks ahead, then you can try to add in maybe one session a day where you're getting that heat stimulus and maybe trying to put your run session as an example midday just to get your core temperature up and uh, getting familiar with the heat and getting your body like comfortable in the heat and also learning your body to take in liquid as, as you are training because that's maybe the most important thing for race day that you're able to really get enough volume of liquid in as you're racing because if not you will uh, be dehydrated and then your body will just shut down thank you all right thank you uh next question please i've got a question right down here at the front all right guys when you're not if, if you're not swimming biking or running what sport are you playing if you're not swimming biking and running what sport do you do i guess we don't do anything like Come just, on. just just eating, sleeping. <laughs> or uh, uh, maybe I can just go back to chasing kids around. Chasing like, kids yeah. around, Tim. Chasing sport. kids around. Okay, what's your what's your Tra other trampolining? Trampolining <laughs> in the backyard. In the backyard. What's your what's your uh, outside sport passion? What do you watch on TV and kids shows at the moment? Bluey for all the parents. Bluey's great. I love Bluey. Are you watching the Women's World Cup soccer? Yeah, there's a little bit of that going on too. Tour de France, Tour de Bend, all of that stuff. Christian? Yeah, it is most like most like cycling races, running races. So it's basically a yeah, triathlon or a separate single sport. I always talk to Christian about my two other favorite uh, Norwegian athletes with uh, Karsten Warholm and uh, Jakob uh, Ingebrigtsen. The Jakob Ingebrigtsen just broke the world record, obviously, for the, I think, the 1500 or mile or something like that, right, Christian, or 2,000, or whatever it was, 3,000, 3,000, that's right, and uh, and then also Carsten Warholm, obviously the 400 meter world record holder for the hurdles, so anyway, Tim, who's your favourite athlete or favourite sport outside of triathlon? Uh, favourite athlete of all time would be Larry Bird, number 33, go Celtics. <laughs> go Celtics, all right, next question out there, I haven't had one on this side of the uh, lawn just yet, do we have one oh, right over there? I don't think either of them, the, either of the three guys would know how to race in the mid-pack. The, uh, the question was, as a person who races in the mid-pack, uh, you know, uh, Just be a hunter. Like? Be, be a, a hunter. hunter. Get after it? Christian? Well, yeah, it was mid-pack like early on in the, like this season, in short distance, like, even like if you're coming in the second pack and you have like 20 guys up front, then you always have people to chase when coming off the bike and you want to run. So, uh, like, like an example in Cagliari, uh, of course I know that the wind is out of the window when I'm uh, 90 seconds off the uh, pace of guys like Alexi and Aiden Wild, but it's still an opportunity to kind of catch and catch and uh, uh, when you're coming off the bike then just trying to catch as many as you can from the first pack and uh, trying to make the best out of the position of the yeah, position you're in. I remember calling the uh, Olympic Games race uh, in Tokyo in 21. Christian was off the pace and uh, he drove that second group, the second and third groups, 
uh, under the tunnel, right out in front of the Ariaki Tennis Stadium, all the way around. And he, uh, you know, he pulled those guys back into contention. So never give up. Always trust yourself. Trust your training, and know that you could do it. You never know what's going to happen around you, around your surroundings. And then Christian was strong enough to uh, come home in the end there with Hayden Wild and also Alex Yi and take the gold medal. So that was a it was a great race. And I'm also seeing, you know, Ben fight back. Um, you know, Ben was overtaken by Christian at the 70.3 Ironman Worlds in in St George, and that was a great fight. Uh, so never give up, just always trust yourself. And then Tim, same sort of thing. I saw him that year in Ironman in Kona when he was second place. It was just an amazing race that day and it was just a battle that went back and forth all day. So you guys always keep your um, mental uh, health in check. And mentally, how do you, I'll just go on the back of that question, but how do you keep that mental side going every single day? I think you need to find time to settle down and relax and also remember why you are in, in, into a sport and like feeling appreciating that actually we can do swim, bike and run full time and uh, of course there will be moments where you feel it's not as joyful to go out the door and do the sessions but uh, then uh, yeah that's life like everything isn't just sunshine. Right, just before we move forward, tomorrow at 11 o'clock we've also got our women's pro panel. We'll be having some of our top athletes coming on down as well. So please come and join us. Race registration for the USAT Nationals is now underway from 11 o'clock this morning. And don't forget, if you want to join us online, if you want to join the live broadcast, PTO, go to Professional Triathletes Organization and go to the website and you can check out how to get online and watch the race tomorrow and also on Saturday because they are going to be two incredible races coming up. We've got three men here that are going to be right at the top of their games coming up tomorrow afternoon. That will start. Everything starts at about 2.30 in the afternoon tomorrow when the Pro Athletes Lounge and also our transition area. Now you'll notice right behind us here, this is where the Pro Athlete uh, transition is and just another 50 yards over there is where the finish line is and the athletes will be getting into the finish line just over that three hour mark. And there was 23 million viewers in 2022 online watching the PTO races. So make sure you book your spot to watch the race tomorrow. All right, next question please, right here. Besides Milwaukee, what's your favorite race course and venue? Besides Milwaukee, what is your favorite race and venue? I think no, the Sun maybe, or Hamburg. So yeah. It Two races with a lot of atmosphere, people there, epic courses, and uh, yeah. Hamburg uh, World Triathlon Championship Series has had upward of 300,000 spectators on the course. Also, Lausanne in uh, Switzerland, the home of the IOC, always a great course as well. Ben? Yeah, I was going to say uh, Roth in Germany at the Challenge Roth event that uh, they estimated 250 to 300,000 spectators. And one of the climbs there, the Solarberg, is uh, like riding in the Tour de France. Like it's, it, I rode it the week of the race, and with nobody out there, it's just another road. But when you're there, they have huge tower speakers, probably like tens of thousands of people just all there. And I couldn't hear like riding my bike for like a mile or so afterwards because my ears were just ringing. And what's my favorite part of Roth? Come on. The beer? The oh, the beer mile. Little... Thank you very much. Tim. I gotta go with Kona. I mean, I just, I have palm trees, can't beat palm trees on a drive on course. There's a lot of palm trees, not much shade, that's for sure. It's very, very hot. But nice question, thank you very much. Okay, got uh, time for a couple of more questions. One down here, please. Uh, what's your go to meal the night before the race? Uh, I keep it super simple like grilled chicken and white rice with some like olive oil and some salt. Same. It's really boring. It's the whole 24 or so hours before the race is just super boring. Yeah, same. Uh, so we prefer to or is like try to take away like vegetables and salad and just go for carbs and some proteins and that's all that comes like maybe two days out. So if we're like we're racing tomorrow, then also yesterday was important to just refill. All right, well that's it ladies and gentlemen for our PTO Pro Panel on our men's side. Please give a big round of applause to Christian, Ben and Tim. They'll be starting tomorrow afternoon at 4.15. We'd love you to come down and join us down there. It's going to be a very exciting race. 
We'll have live coverage right here on the big screen TV. So if you wanted to mull around the expo, come on down, get your stuff down here, come on over there as well. It will be electric and you'll see 17 out of the top 30 men ranked in the world at the PTO. So thank you very much for your attention and your support. And we'll see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock for our Women's Pro Panel. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all out there.